Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys today? I am so excited to bring you this project. Oh my gosh, I've had such a fun week of working with this Be Jolly stamp set. It is an adorable Santa Claus stamp set that is in our July to December 2021 mini catalog. And it is the cutest. Look how cute this stamp set is. It has those cute little Santa Clauses, that tree, the star, a merry hello, be jolly, the sleigh, and uh, to and from. Hello, can you not see some cute Santa tags with this? Well, actually, I have. They're over on my blog, so if you want to go check them out, hit the link in the description below and go over to Inky Hands Warm Hearts and check out my Santa tags because they are adorable. I have blogged with the set for an entire week, and today is my final day with this stamp set, so I have left the best for last. I adore this card and I hope that you will too. Let's go ahead and get started. Here is the cutest card. How adorable is this Santa Claus? You have that iridescent snowflake. You have these gorgeous snowflakes here in the background. These iridescent opals. It is just the cutest set. I just love it. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to make this card. So we will be using this embossing folder. Oh, sorry, not this one. I pulled the wrong one out. This one, the one with the snowflakes, you get two in this package. So the pine boughs are beautiful, but we're going to use the snowflakes today to tie in with our wonderful snowflakes, which are absolutely beautiful. This is what those look like. Look at that the shimmer, they are just gorgeous. We're also gonna use our layering circles. We're gonna do one of these circles with that same background. And then I have this little black scalloped border to put around it. We are also, this is how the wonderful snowflakes come. You get 24 in the pack, they're super great. We're gonna be using, I told you, the opal rounds, which are awesome and glisteny gonna move those out of the way. And of course, Stampin' Blends are our friend. Let's go ahead and get all of our embossing out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And we are gonna emboss this circle and then this piece of um, basic white cardstock. So let's go ahead and grab the machine. And actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna use the Baton. No. I'm going to use the big one. All right. I was think I was trying to, I was second guessing myself. I'm just going to go with this one. <laughs> okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to stick. Don't mind my little puppy. She is so cute, but sometimes she makes noise. Um, we're going to open this up. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and just do this circle because it will be easy. And I want a little bit of that big one, but I want some of these small ones and these swirls. So I need to, maybe I'll bring it down a little. There's more swirls over here. Yeah, I love those. So let's put it right there. We can get still some of that big snowflake and a lot of swirls. So when you use an embossing folder, this particular embossing folder is a 3D one. And so for 3D, it says um, you need plate number one, then you're gonna put the embossing folder with the paper in the middle and then plate number four. So this one's number one. Here's the plate with the paper in it. And here's number four. We're gonna go ahead and crank that through. And then we will also do it for the large piece. Now, this is a smaller embossing folder and it is made to fit into our mini machine, which is, oh my gosh, adorbs. But I'm not gonna use that today because the piece that we're using is rather large. Isn't that stunning? Oh my gosh, I love how that turns out. Okay, let's move along. We are doing awesome. So let's go ahead and move on to the next part, which is we're gonna go ahead and run that embossing folder one more time. Well, actually it's gonna be two more times, but first we're gonna open it and we are gonna stick this part, half, kind of half of our cardstock in and we're gonna close that up and we're gonna do this half first. And you're probably saying, what? Why? Well, because it's small, we gotta do it this way. So we're gonna run half of it through. All right. Ooh, that was a 
loud noise. Sorry about that. And then we're gonna go ahead and open that up. And we're gonna slide it to this side and we're gonna put the other half through. Now it doesn't match up and because of that, I've designed this card where you're not gonna notice. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So let's go ahead and put this back in. Put this in here. And see why I needed the big machine? Because I needed this entire big, large space to run my card through, because it was a big card front. And it made another big noise. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. Don't be scared. Look at how beautiful that is. You can't really even tell, except in this one spot that you only got a partial snowflake. But we're going to cover that right up, and I'm going to show you how. Let's go ahead and move this big guy out of the way. Close him up, one, two, get my plates out of the way, and let's get started so I can show you how awesome this card comes together. So we have a piece of eight and a half by five and a half, and it is our basic white cardstock. We're doing white on white, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half. I'm gonna use my bone folder, and I will score that. Now, this piece is gonna get layered right on top, so it's gonna be white on white. But before we do all of those shenanigans, we're gonna attach some things here to the middle. Now, I have a strip of designer series paper. Isn't this pretty? On this card, I used a stripe, but I thought, oh, I'm gonna use this this time because there's just too many patterns. Look how cute all these patterns are. You have to use them all because they're so cute. So this time I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna show you how I cut out this little flag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down the center here and I am just gonna bring my scissor to the middle and then I'm gonna kind of watch where that is and I am gonna cut to that, that same spot here and then I'm gonna do the same thing from the other side and cut and then that's how you get your little cut in there. Perfect. You can also use one of our tags. Let me grab it real fast to show you that you can also use it to do the same thing. It is called our tailored tag punch. And what you can do is you can stick like, I'm not going to stick that side in again, but you can stick this side in and see when you punch there, it will also leave a flag end on it, which is amazing. So if you don't want to go with that, you can do that. You have two options, but right now I'm going to go ahead and this is what's going to cover that snowflake that didn't get all the way through and no one will know. We're not going to tell, right? It's our secret. So let's go ahead and use our wet glue. Whenever I use the wet glue, I bring out this silicone mat because I tend to make a mess and that way we won't have um, any glue catastrophes. So let's go ahead and put some on the back. I'm, I'm probably going way too much because this glue is so strong you really don't need that much. Which is why I end up having these glue catastrophes. So just forgive me and um, <laughs> I'm going to turn this upside down here just so that I can continue holding it without having to flip it around. And I'm going to lay it maybe a little higher. Maybe right here. I think I want quite a bit of white at the bottom. It's still going to cover that snowflake. And I'm just going to lightly press. That glue is going to seep down into all the nooks and crannies that have been cut out with this embossing. And it will adhere to that piece. So that's what we have so far. Now, let's go ahead and attach our scalloped black circle, which, by the way, is this largest one in the layering circles. And this is our largest regular circle. So this one, remember, we ran it through and it has embossing on it. So the raised side is the side I want up. So the side with the indentions is the side that I am putting this adhesive on. Same thing with the with this one. It's time to glue it down. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to flip that back over and then I'm going to go ahead and attach it onto this piece of black. And I will just kind of wiggle it around play with it until that's what I like about the wet glue is that it does give you that wiggle room so that you can get a pretty even border all the way around in the black. So I hope that that is well is, is going good. All right. 
Let's see. So let's go ahead and do the next step. Well, the next step is going to be to attach this layer on to our piece just like that. So let's go ahead and use that wet. Well, we don't have to use the wet glue this time because this piece is smooth. Let's go ahead and pull our seal out. I really like this glue. And we are going to kind of go around in a circular motion. Well, hexagon. I don't know how many sides it has, so really it may not be a hexagon, but I'm gonna work my way around just like that. And then we are going to attach right onto this edge, about even on both sides of that cute little flagged area that we've made. And let's turn it so that that, mm, yeah, like this. I want that big snowflake to be on this corner like that. All right, so now that's down. We're doing awesome, guys. Let's go ahead and do a little stamping now. So let's go ahead and bring in our Mossy Meadow Green ink and our, I mean, paper and our Memento Black ink. And we are gonna grab the words, Be Jolly. I'm gonna ink that up. <clears throat> and then I am gonna bring it down where I can see a lot better. So right about here, because I don't want to stick my head in the camera. And we are going to stamp Be Jolly. And if it doesn't look good, we'll flip it over. Hmm, I wiggled it a little. Let's try the other side. I think this ink pad is super juicy. Oh, that one's worse. Let's just keep this one. <laughs> wow, that ink pad is juicy. I do definitely do not need to re-ink that for a while. Okay. It's only paper though, guys, right? So if we make a mistake and we have to cut another piece of paper, it's only paper. So even I do things that are crazy and I make mistakes. So I definitely don't want you to be afraid of making a mistake. But we're gonna we're gonna roll with that. Um, be jolly. Um, that is quite the juicy uh, memento ink pad though. Next time I'll have to be more gentle when I tap that. So now that we have our bead jolly, I'm gonna go ahead and use our paper snips and I'm going to cut one end like so and the other end like that. What do you guys think? Not bad, right? All right, we're gonna throw those two pieces we cut off off the ends and we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and we're gonna put some dimensionals on the back. And you can see that other side was super saturated, way more than this side. So let's use our take your pick tool and pull the backs off and then this can go right into the trash can and not all over my craft room, my favorite part. So let's add the bee jelly, just a little overlap right there onto our scallop circle. That's looking good so far. What do you guys think? I think it's time to put our little guy onto our backing. So let's put dimensionals on it as well. How fun will that be? Let's pop it up so we can see that we do have a little white on white going on. So let's go ahead and attach those all over our piece. And we want to definitely put some in the middle because we do not want this to fall in any places. So I'm having a Stampin' Dimensional Party, have you heard? Let, come on over. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's pull the backs off, just like that. But I think we've reached our saturation point. Let's throw those in the trash, and let's see if the pick tool will pick up a few more of these guys. Did I get this middle one? And maybe one more. I think I got them all. Yep, perfect trash can. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach this, what we have so far, on to our card. Not too bad. Not too bad. Magic of television. My Santa Claus is done. Yay. Let's put some dimensionals on the back of him because he needs to definitely pop on our card here. Now, he doesn't need quite as many dimensionals. That looks good. I'm just going to put one here in the center and then maybe um, minis on his hands here because they are sticking out and I don't want them to buckle and maybe one 
on the pom pom of his hat. All right, let's pull these puppies off. And one more, there we go. Oh, I forgot the one over here. That's good. All right, let's attach our cute little Santa Claus. Oh my God, he is precious. Okay, now let's attach our snowflake and let's talk about these puppies for a second. You can see um, I've been using them quite a bit, but see in the center here, they have this awesome shape. Let me show you how awesome Stampin' Up! is. That shape is the identical shape of our Stampin' Dimensionals. Amazing! They think of everything. We don't even have to think about it. So now we just place this little puppy right here in the center. Pull the back off of it. Perfect placement and it doesn't show. Fabulous! I'm gonna lift up here and kind of tuck that snowflake behind my Santa. Make sure that this is down like that. Yeah, that looks awesome. And there is my snowflake. Let's do the inside. Now I'm going to grab a different memento ink pad because that one was so wet. And I do have a few because I have been stamping for um, about 20 years, <laughs> maybe a little longer. So here is my second one and we are going to attach, we're going to use another circle and another really cute little black scallop circle. So let's move this card out of the way temporarily and we're going to take our little bird. He is so cute and we're going to stamp him right there. How adorable is he? Oh my gosh, I'm in love with him. Let's go ahead and attach him onto the center here. And it's just going to leave a tiny border black all the way around him. We are going to color him in, but let's clean our stamp. All right. Let's start with his hat. Of course, it's red because he is shadowing our Santa Claus. And this is the same way that I colored our Santa. We're going to do his little beak in this daffodil. That was a real red for the hat. We are going to make him blue. He's going to be a blue bird. So let's go ahead and color him in. All right. Now I'm going to add a little bit more blue like around his wing and I'm going to color it a little darker and up here as well. And then I'm going to give him like a little shadow here by his belly. And let's see if you guys can see that. Hopefully it's not blurry and you can see the coloring. All right. Last step is to add a little bit of this pool party, which is kind of like a very pale aqua. And I just want to add a pop of it to the white so it's not so stark. And then I'm just going to put a little line down here to kind of ground him just like that. What do you guys think of him? Pretty good, right? Hopefully he's not blurry. All right, let's go ahead and attach him to the inside of our card right there. For a little surprise when you open the inside, this is a great card to give to a friend, someone that may love the holidays. You can just send them a card and say, hey guys, I know you love the holidays so much and I just wanted to tell you I am excited too. Can't wait to see you. You know, it could be any kind of occasion. It could be your Christmas card. You could put a nice Christmas sentiment on the inside and take it from there. But so far, that's where we're at. Now, the last final step for this card is our opal rounds. So let's pull them out. And I love them. They are gorgeous and sparkly. So let's pull the other part of your take your pick tool. I have the pointy side. And actually, there's a spatula on this end. This is like the best tool. 
and it comes with a stylus end that you can stick in there and swap out. This has putty on the end and the putty helps you to pick up these pieces. I'm going to use the large pearls. So I'm going to, well, let's not use that one because it doesn't want to come. Oh, there it is. It finally decided to be my friend. We're going to put one up there and we're going to put one over here in this corner. And I like to do them in threes and I tend to do them like in a triangular shape. So we got like a triangle going on. I think it looks kind of good. What do you guys think of this um, designer series paper versus that? I kind of like it and I love the variety. Of course, you don't have to use the same. There's so many cute papers and we got to use them all. One thing about your papers, you need to use them. Don't keep them. I really hope that you enjoyed this card, this project. This is probably my favorite card this week. I have been blogging all week, so check out my blog, inkyhandswarmhearts.com. The description is in um, below here. It's linked below. And I would appreciate it if you would help me out because I am kind of new to YouTube. I have been blogging for well over a year, and um, I love it. I absolutely love vlogging, but I would greatly appreciate you helping me out by subscribing to my YouTube channel. I am looking to get me some subscribers and um, likes and comments. That would be awesome. You can share my videos. I would greatly appreciate that. You can share them to all social media. Just click the share. You can um, choose copy link and stick it into a text message to someone like, hey, you would really love to watch this video or stick it in um, to your social media with the share button and hit your social media. Um, but ask your friends to subscribe too, if you don't mind. And when you do, you're going to get notifications of when I post new videos. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, feedback is always welcome. Um, and also check out my blog. Like I said, I blog every day. So go there for inspiration. There's measurements, fun projects. I blog every single day and I do seven days with one particular stamp set that I showcase for a week. So check that out as well. Thanks so much for watching. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. I am so grateful to have you here. Happy stamping guys.